A gloriously warm sunny day masks the forthcoming battle for the fate of our world. The gods themselves are unaware of the magnitude of the onslaught forthcoming. A herald approaches Zeus to inform him of the oncoming threat. The herald bows and says, Lord Zeus, I come with information that there is an army of great force gathering at the mountain's base. The soldiers of the enemy are gigantic abominations of humanity, sire. They do not resemble anything that we have encountered before. We only know that they are enormous mounds of flesh that are being controlled by an unknown force. Dark clouds form over the throne room, and Zeus, without hesitation, calls out, All gods to arms. As the herald turns to leave, he says, I shall see to it the gods are informed. Zeus walks to his throne and picks up a very brilliantly crafted bag with a depiction of two birds on either side. Zeus walks from the throne room to the edge of the platform overlooking the mountain. Looking up, Zeus yells, This is my kingdom, and I am the most powerful. Zeus looks down and continues to yell, No god, man, or devil will survive the fury of my lightning. The warring passion for victory, Zeus, sends bolt after bolt of lightning down the mountain into the crowds of gigants. The gigants start to climb the mountain, despite all the lightning hits from Zeus. Large grunts of effort bellow out of the monster's mouths, adding to the fear and morbidity of the attack on the Mount Olympus gods. Hercules is the heart of the war on the great plain at the base of Mount Olympus. His spear engaged in deadly blows to Gigans as fast as they appear before him. His shield held high above his head to protect himself from the return blows by the ruthless Gigans. One by one, the demigods use their individual talents to bring down the Gigans. All the demigods of this time are shown in this battle of epic proportions. Finally, the day is won, but many are lost. Hercules searches the further source of the Gigans, but the true form of the enemy remains uncertain. Back on Mount Olympus, not all were unscathed. One titan managed to scale Mount Olympus, and upon entry, furiously runs at the first figure it sees. Hephaestus receives a fatal, unsuspecting blow to his heart. The remaining gods manage to capture the Gigant and await the judgment of Zeus. Zeus, pleased with the victory, returns to his family to discover that one titan had managed to kill his son. Sorrow and mourning fill Zeus, and he secludes himself for many days. Trumpets sound, and the herald enters Zeus's chambers. The herald quickly says, My lord Zeus, I bring news that Ares is coming to seek an audience with you. Just then the door opens abruptly, and Ares approaches Zeus. Father, I have come to ask what you intend to do about this atrocity. My own brother, felled by these these things. Zeus looks at Ares with sadness and anguish in his eyes. Gods cannot be allowed to die. The repercussions of this tragedy are many, and we must use whatever we have to eliminate this threat. What say you, Father? There must be something more we can do for the protection of our world. It has been prophesied that only a titan can kill a god. How is it that a mere monster can accomplish such a thing? Did Cronus not assure you that our lineage would be eternal? Zeus at that moment finally speaks with fury. My father burns in Tartarus. How dare you allow him to be mentioned as the instrument of our salvation? Zeus lashes out his Ares, throwing him across the room with a fist of lightning. Ares, badly hurt, watches as Zeus calms down to realize that he has injured his son. Ares gets up slowly and walks to the door of the room and stops. Father, Cronus' prophecy must come to pass, or our world will perish. After Ares leaves, he falls back into his chair, his hands shaking and clutching his forehead. A eulogy is held high atop a pillar on Mount Olympus. All of the gods except the demigods are in attendance. Zeus walks solemnly to a very fine podium made of white stone. We are here today to release my son's body to the afterlife. He goes to the afterlife seeking the intelligence of those fallen. I bestow upon him his mighty hammer and payment for my hope in his day of retribution. I vow to my lineage, the Olympians and the Titans, that we shall remain eternally triumphant over the tyrant that is death. We must destroy the monster in order to give it a new purpose. My father's prophecy and final gift to us must be used as our guardian now in our time of need. Hera screams out, Husband, what do you think you're doing, making this monster that took our son a guardian of all things? You speak madness. A life of service to the gods is befitting as the eternal punishment for this god slayer. 
The last gigant remained standing, chained in the middle of the Colosseum atop Mount Olympus. Zeus walks to the gigant as he is watched by the gods who populate the crowd. Zeus brings forth the bag which contains his lightning and pulls out a golden medallion with a similar depiction of two birds. My fellow gods, my father who art in Tartarus, left our lineage with a powerful artifact, spoken to have the ability for the reformation of life. Cronus's prophecy foretells of an eternal guardian formed from a being that is able to kill a god. We invoke this guardian to come forth. Holding the medallion high for the crowd to see, Zeus then places the medallion upon the final remaining gigant. Walking back a few steps, Zeus turns and sends a lightning bolt at the medallion. The medallion resonates and the chains holding the gigant melt as flames engulf the gigant. Zeus and the other gods witness a very powerful phenomenon as the gigant forms into a bird of flame. None of the gods knew the true power of this giant bird, but all could hear a thousand screams as the transmorphing occurs, and ex- unexpectedly the giant bird roars straight to the underworld. When witnessing the descent of the bird to the underworld, the enemy is now known as Hades. Hades had created the gigants using a forbidden ritual that gives form to a mass of souls. The more souls that Hades collects, the more gigants that can be formed. This meant that Hades had the ability to attack Mount Olympus yet again 